Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Flutter tutorial video. In today's video, we're going to be revisiting the scoped model plugin, but this time we're going to be applying it to a larger application, one that has multiple pages so that we can see how the actual model works in these situations. I've gotten quite a few questions with regards to scoped model, Redux, and Flux and how they would work in larger applications like this. Therefore, I figured it was worth revisiting these different plugins in larger applications. Now, in the case of Redux, I will be building out a much larger application, so that will be coming later. All right, so in our application, we have the root widget, which is just a stateless widget, which creates a material app. And then we're pointing it directly towards a stateful widget, which is just building out an empty scaffold. Inside of our PubSpec YAML, let's bring in scoped model. The current version is 0.2.0, and that's the version that I will be using for this tutorial. Once you've got scoped model in your application, we can go ahead and create a models file. So our model file, I'm just going to call model.dart. And in here, we will describe the shape of the data that we're going to use inside of our application. For this application, the basic model that we're going to be looking at will just be an item which has a single field inside of it. And that single field will be a string. Inside of this file, we also want to import the scoped model plugin. So we import scoped model backslash scoped model.dart. Now that we've got the scoped model import and we have our item model, we can create our app model, which will extend the scoped models model class. Inside of here, we can define more specific things about how our application's data should look. First, let's create a field called underscore items, and this will be a list of all of our item objects. We want to set this equal to an empty list by default, so we just write list item underscore items equals empty list. Now that we have our items list, we can create a getter, which will allow us to get this private variable from outside of this class. Now, the main reason why we follow this pattern with scoped model is because we want to make it so that the variables that we're defining inside of our model can only be accessed in very specific ways. We want to give the user full read access of the items variable. So we create a getter which allows them to just fetch the entire list out of the model. Now let's create a function called add item. And this will be called when we want to add an item to the list. Inside of this function, we can just call our items list, and then we can call dot add and just pass in the item. And this will allow us to then add the item to our list. We'll do the same thing for a delete function. So this function is called delete item. We pass in an item, and then that item gets removed from the list. Now I'm actually making a deliberate mistake here and we'll talk about what that mistake is when we get to it. Now let's go back into our main.dart file and we'll import the scoped model package as well as our model file. So scoped model backslash scoped model.dart and then our model file is in scoped multi example model.dart. So the way our application is going to work with the current model that we have is we want to have two pages and we'll use a tab system for now. We'll have our home page, which will have a input box on it. And of course this input box needs to have a text controller. The user will be able to put in text and then when they hit a button, it will clear the input box. And then we can tab over to another page, which will allow us to see the list. So this will actually display the list for us. Let's first set up our home page state object by creating the text editing controller that we're going to need. So we just want to initialize this text editing controller as a global variable for this state class. And then we want to replace the scaffold that we were returning from the build function here with a center. And then we'll embed a column widget into the center. Inside of this column for the first widget, we'll create a container and then we'll put our text field inside of that container. And for this text field, we want to put in our controller. 
So we just say controller, controller. And then after this text field, we want to create a scoped model descendant with our app model inside of it. So this is a widget that will go and try to find the nearest scoped model widget with the app model in it, and then pull the data from that widget. The reason we create this here is because we only need to expose our model to our raised button so that we can call the add item method when we push the button. So here we'll fill out our builder, which takes in the build context, a child widget, and then the model itself. And then we'll pass back a raised button, which will have a child of text, which says add item. Our on pressed function will be an anonymous function. Inside of this anonymous function, we want to take our controller.txt and then create a new item object based on the controller.txt. Because remember, our item object is what holds the actual name. And if we wanted to pass in the controller.txt directly into the add item function, it wouldn't work because that doesn't take a string, it takes an item type. So we create a new item and then we call model add item and we pass in our item and this will then pass it into our list. Now we do also want to call set state and then clear the controller box. So we just take controller.txt and set it equal to an empty string and this will then clear our text field widget. Now let's create our display page widget. And this widget will be a stateless widget because we don't need to handle any kind of internal state here. Inside of the build function for our display page widget, we'll create a container which has a scoped model descendant widget inside of it. And then we'll create the builder which will pass back a column widget. And now we can take our model.items and then map on this list and create a list of widgets, which we can then feed into our column. So for each item inside of our list, we'll create a list tile. And we want to display the item name. And we also want to add some functionality so that we can delete the item. And we'll do this through a on long pressed listener. On long pressed, we'll just call to model.delete item and then it will pass in the item that we're iterating through. So now we have a competent looking display page and we also have our home page which will allow us to add items. Let's create the base of this application that will allow us to then feed the model to these two elements. Up here inside of our material app widget, we want to remove the home page as home. We want to replace it with a default tab controller widget. We'll give this default tab controller a length of two because we have two pages. And then what we can do is give it a child of the scoped model with our app model inside of it. Then the child for the scoped model will be our scaffold. And let's define the model above the scaffold. We just instantiate an app model, which will be our app state. And then we can create our scaffold. So now we can create the app bar. And in the app bar, we want to have our tab bar as well as our title. So we'll put in the title first. And then in the bottom property, we'll put in a tab bar widget. We'll put in two tabs for the tabs property of our tab bar, one for our home page, and then the other one for our display page. And for the home page, we'll just have the icon be icons.home, and then the text be home page. And then for the actual display page, we'll have the icon be icons.screen rotation, and then the text will say display. After our app bar, we can now create the body property for our scaffold. And in here, we want to create a tab bar view widget, which we can then use to connect our pages to each of the tabs. Inside of the tab bar views children property, we just put in our home page, which corresponds with the first tab, and then the display page, which corresponds with the second tab. Now we can build out the application. And you can see here, we've got our app bar. It's got the two tabs and we can go back and forth. For now, the display is empty. And in the home page, 
we can open up our text box and then type in something. So I can just type in test and then hit add item. It clears the text controller. And if I go over to display, we have test in here. Now I'm just going to add two items in here and I'll show you where the error is that I made before. So if I click and hold on test one, it's actually been deleted from our model, but we do not see it happen until we come back to this page. Now the reason for this is because the model doesn't tell the view that it needs to update. So this is a problem and it can be solved using a function that comes with the scoped model plugin called notify listeners. So at the bottom of our delete item method, we can then call this notify listeners function, which will then notify the actual view that it needs to call set state and rebuild that widget. So now you can see here we have two items inside of our application. And if I click and hold on hello, it gets removed and test gets moved up. And now if I click and hold on test, it also gets removed. Now the main reason why I don't have to call the notify listeners function inside of our add item method is because the add item method is being called from a stateful widget and we're calling the set state function immediately after we call this function. The state doesn't actually show up on our home page. It only shows up when we go to our other page. So when we move the tab over, the widget tree rebuilds the display page, which then fetches from the model. So calling notify listeners here would actually be redundant, and there's really no reason to do it. With our delete item method, because we're calling this inside of a stateless widget, we need to call the notify listeners function so that it knows to rebuild the entire widget. Now before I finish this tutorial off, I want to replace the tab method with a traditional navigation method. So rather than using tabs, we'll use the context navigator to move from page to page. And the reason I want to do this is to just show you guys how the scoped model would work in both situations. Inside of both of our main pages, we'll create a static final string called route. And then for each of them, we'll put in a string representation of the actual page name. So this one will be called display-page. And then for our home page, we'll put in home-page. Now keep in mind that for the home page, the static final string needs to be defined inside of the actual stateful widget class rather than the state class. Now I'm also going to take everything from home all the way down to the second to last parenthesis and just comment it out so that we can now implement navigation. Up at the top of our MyApp class, we can define a routes map, which will be a map of string mapped to a widget builder function. We're mapping the route that we created inside of our two pages to a function that takes in the context and then inflates that page. So home page route maps to build context home page and display page route maps to build context display page. Now inside of our material app widget, we can add the home property and point it towards our home page. And we can put the routes property with our routes map into it as well. For both of our pages, we also want to add a scaffold and wrap it around all of the other widgets that are already in here. So we just say scaffold and then for the body property, we have the rest of what our page used to be. And then we have to put a parenthesis at the end here. And we'll do the same for the display page. Now below our raised button inside of our home page, we can create another raised button which will then allow us to move from the home page to the display page. So here we're just creating a raised button. The child will just say display page and then on pressed, we'll call navigator of context. And then we want to push in a, a material page route widget, which will have a builder inside of it. The builder takes in the build context and then inflates our display page. 
We can wire up the button for our display page in a similar way, except this time I'm going to put it inside of an app bar, which we'll put inside of this display page. So inside of the scaffold, we'll create an app bar, and then this app bar's title will just be display page, and then we'll add our raised button into the actions property of this app bar. The raised button will say back home, and then we can click the on pressed, which we'll call navigator of context, push, material page route, builder, and this time we'll point it towards the home page. Just for the sake of aesthetics, I'm also going to put an app bar into our home page so that we have an app bar on both pages. If we build out this application, everything seems to work. However, if we try to go to display page, you'll see that it actually doesn't work. So if we click display page, we've got this huge error inside of the body because it's saying that the items that we're trying to fetch and build out our widgets with is null. And the reason why this is the case is because we haven't actually defined our scoped model widget anywhere inside of the tree. So it's trying to find the app model, but there's no widget to fetch it from. There are various places that we could position this widget for it to work. I'm going to put it right at the top, right above our material application. If you find that you're having trouble getting the scoped model to work for multiple pages, your best bet is to actually put it at the very root of your application. So here you can see we're returning a scoped model with app model inside of it. Then we instantiate a new app model object and then the child for it is our actual material application. So now if I click display page, you can see that the error has completely gone away because it's fetching an empty list. And now you can see that everything works as it did before. So I can enter in items on the home page. So let's see, just I'll put in some random characters, click add item, and then when we go to the display page, all of that stuff appears. And if I click on this and hold it, it will get deleted. And the same goes for any other item inside of the list. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you disliked the video, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.